writing linear equations. Today you're given a graph. Actually, I'm going to sheet a little and give you the graph, and we're going to do a little bit off the tables also because we're going to do the rule of four. So, kind of makes tomorrow even easier. But basically, the I can't say method you need to know for today is I can use a graph to write an equation by looking at a graph. All right, your two vocab here on this page, a linear function always has a slope of like a negative two or two, it has a constant, it doesn't change. Because it has to make a line. And we're working with our y equals mx plus b again. Who remembers from earlier in the year another name for proportional relationship? Because if it has proportional relationship, its y-intercept is always the zero. So we write it like y equals mx. We don't go y equals mx plus zero. If it's y equals mx, it has proportional relationship. Does anyone remember? First word started with a d, second one a b. It direct goes variation. direct variation. That was another name that we were talking about with proportional relationship. Then to find the rate of change or the slope. We did this earlier, so hopefully this comes back to you. The slope, the m, it's always your y2 minus your y1 all over x2 minus x1. Or the rate of change, we can look at when we look at the table. The y is always on the top, that's the big mistake, they flip them around, but the x is on the top instead, don't do that. The y's are on the top, x's are on the bottom. And then unit rate, when the denominator is one. Like you might get a car that gets 21 miles per, not like a cab, but P-E-R, per one gallon. So when you're talking unit rate, it's per one. All right, first example, rule four, looking at this graph, the line is on your graph for you. First thing we need to do is find some exact points on this line that are at whole numbers. We don't want to find them and work with fractions. And my hint is always try to find your y. If it's going to go through an exact spot on the y-axis, woohoo, that, that's the same as finding our b in y equals mx plus b. So can we see on our y-axis where it intercepts? Does it intercept at a fraction or at a whole number? Whole number. So what would that whole number be? Zero and five, let's put a spot there. Let's put that on our table, zero and five. Now, I like to go right down here and do my equation, y equals, because I know that my y-intercept is now a what? Plus or minus five? It's a plus five. Now I just have to find what goes with my x. To find what we call that that's with our x? The slope. So now we have to find the slope. Finding the slope by looking at the graph. Well, first of all, let's find a couple more points. Zero and five, what's another one? One and one. One and one. Any others? I'm gonna write that on the table, one and one. Two, negative three. Two, negative three. Okay, you have to have two for sure. On your homework today, I'm gonna to make you do three. Okay, just so you have three points. Now, you're, who remembers from earlier this year when I said to try to find your slope off the graph, what's the best thing that you can to try to do? To get two points that are what? Closer together, because then you don't have to simplify your answer. Or you don't have to simplify it as much. I can use either one of these, either these two, or these two, or these two to find my slope. But when you simplify it, they're going to be the same. Let's go with the two, let's go with two that are close together. Want to use these two? So from here to here. Another way by looking at the graph is rise over run. I can tell by looking at this graph what kind of a slope does it have, a positive or a negative? Negative. A negative. Because the y-axis, if you pretend that's the zero on a number line, it's pointing at the negative end. So it has a negative slope. And if you look at quadrant one here, it's got a decrease there, doesn't it? Not an increase. All right, so let's look at that. Rise over run. If I go from here to here, is this a rise or a run? Run. Okay, and I'm going from here to the left, how many? One. Is that a plus one or a minus one? Minus one. So my run is a minus one. What's my rise? Four. 
4, 4 up, so is that a plus 4 or minus 4? A plus 4. So rise over run, is this going to be 4 over 1, a negative 1, or is it going to be a negative 1 over 4? The rise is a positive 4, my run was a negative 1. Now what does that simplify to? 4. Close. Negative 4. Negative 4. I have a 4 over negative 1, so we get a negative 4x. So we have a negative 4 x plus 5. That is the equation of that line. We can also look at the table like we're going to be doing tomorrow. What's the change for my y's? So it's always y over x, rise over run. What is my change from 5? What did I have to do to go from 5 to 1? Minus 4. I had to minus 4. That's my y. That goes on the top. What did I have to do for my x? Plus 1. I plus 1. 0 to 1. I plus 1. So negative 4 over 1 simplifies still to a negative 4. Two ways to find your slope. Is this graph a proportional relationship? Yes or no? No. No. Why not? It does not go through the origin, so it is not a proportional relationship. So and then it will ask you on your homework, how did you calculate the slope? Well. If you did it this way, you're going to say, I took the rise over the run on the graph to figure it out. Or if you did the table, you could say, I found the difference, the, the change for my x and my y. Just tell me like that, what you did, which one of these you did to find your slope. What kind of slope does this one have? Positive or negative? Positive. It does have a positive slope. y equals, we need something x. And we know this is going to be a positive already, a positive x, because that's a positive slope. Here's my y and my x. What's one point? What's the first point we should look at? Okay, zero and what? Zero. Because this one is at a whole number. At an integer, it is at a negative 2. So zero, negative 2. What does that tell me? Half my equation is done. What, where does it go? This is my intercept. Yep, my y intercept, my b. So what do I put here? Two. Minus 2. So now I just have to find my slope. y equals what x? Minus 2. We have to find the slope. And we already know it's positive by looking at the graph. Let's pick another point. We have to have two of them actually for today's homework. Give me another one. Um, zero and 6. Okay, so 0 and, and 6. I meant, no, never mind. Try that backwards. Try six, six and zero. zero. There we go. That one works. Six and zero. So that tells me that's where it intercepts on the x. And one more. Negative three, negative three. Negative three, negative three. I'll go with that one. Negative three, negative three. Is there one more in between here and here? What is it? You could have used 3, negative 1 as well. There's others, but those are ones that you could have used. So we need to find our slope. You want to do rise over run first? All right, let's practice. Let's pretend we didn't pick two closest ones and see what would happen. Say we use these two. Rise over run. How many did we run? We ran what? Six plus six. What did we rise? Two. Two. All we'd have to do is simplify that and get what? One over three. Let's see if we get the same then if we would have done the close ones. These two. Or let's do these close two because there's no writing in between. How many do I run? One, two, three. How many do I rise? Positive 1. See how you end up with the same slope? It's just already simplified when you pick points that are closer. So your final answer is y equals 1 third x minus 2. That's the equation to that graph. Describe the graph using at least four vocabulary words. Now that 
doesn't mean the ones that we wrote the definitions to earlier in the packet. Give me, tell me something about this graph. Tell me a sentence about this graph. The graph does not have direct variation. Ooh, the graph does not have direct variation. Direct variation is a word. Tell me something else. Want to use four vocab words. Direct variation was one. The graph what? Is positive. It is linear. All these are good. What else? Does not go across the origin, so it doesn't have direct variation or proportional relationship. It's a function because it is a straight line. And no two points. Perfect. It's a function. All good things that you can talk about when you do that down here on one of your homework things. Um, okay, let's do this one. What are my points? Let's start on the Y, because now here we're just, we, our constraints were just in the first quadrant, because we're talking what? Money and per month. Savings account balance in dollars. When we first opened our savings account at zero months, how much money did we have in our savings account? We had what? 450. So what's my first ordered pair here? Zero months, we had $450. How about at one month? One month I had $400. What about, let's just skip to four. What are the, how many did I have at four months? 250. What kind of a rate of change do we have here? An increase or a decrease? Oh, we're spending money somewhere, aren't we? We're spending money on something, whether it's going to the movie or tickets or candy, I don't know, but you're spending money per month. That's what this graph is indicating. This one says write a short story about that due to time. You don't have to do the short story in your homework, okay? Because we're running short on time today. Now, let's find our equation. Y equals, well, what's my Y intercept? Right here is the Y intercept, my 450, 0, 450. So I know 450 plus 450. What goes with my x? I need to find my slope. Hold up the slope that you come up with on your boards. And let me let me tell you this, if you come up with a 1, you're wrong. If you come up with a negative 1, you're wrong. Ah, a little tricky, but not really. So think about it. If you're having troubles finding it on the rise over run, maybe you need to look at the table. I'll give you a couple seconds. So they try to stump you on the graph part of this one because everybody's going to go rise one, or run one, rise one, right? No. You uh, blocks you do, but what do we do if we do rise over run? If I run from here to here, okay, so from here to here is running how many? One. So I run one. What do I rise though? I go down a negative, not a negative one, but a negative. 50. Each one of these slots is worth $50. Not $1, but $50. So it's a negative 50 over 1, or just negative 50. So here's what your equation should be. Y equals a negative 50x plus 450. So that means we're spending $50 every what? Every month. We're spending $50 every month on something. So we gotta come up with a story for that. All right, this one, middle school sales tickets. Well, what does it show at five? If we were to buy five tickets, how much do five tickets cost? Right there, that one. So we know they don't have a table, but I could write it. Five and 15, correct? What's another point? Four and 
Yep, yeah, that one works right at a whole number. Four and what? Twelve. What's another one? What's six? Six and? Eighteen. Eighteen? Yeah. So we got six and eighteen. All right, then we've got three. Let's work with that. We need to write our equation now. Y equals. Do I know my y-intercept yet? Here's my y. Do I know the y-intercept yet? Do I know where that's going to cross yet? Not for sure. So let's find our slope. What goes with our x? Rise over run. And these all go by 1, so I don't have to worry about being tricked. So my run is over 1. How many do I rise? So what is my slope? 3 over 1 equals y equals 3x. Perfect. Now, I need to find out where it crosses the y. What can I do? Yes, I can keep going. What? Because look at, right, 1 up 3. Now that I know my slope, so now I can go down 3, left 1. Now what? Down 3, left 1, dot. Down 3, left 1. Down 3, left 1. So perfect. This makes sense. This graph makes sense. So how many zero tickets cost me how much money? Zero tickets costs me zero dollars. So this is a very good graph. This is excellent. It ends up at zero. How much is one ticket? Three dollars. So in this, the cost of one ticket is three dollars. Now, what's my y-intercept? Where did it inter where did it cross my y? At the zero. So do I have to put a plus zero over here? No. No. This one has what? Does this one have direct variation? Does it have proportional relationship? Yes. Yeah. It is a very good graph because it starts at the zero, zero. In this real life situation, that is a good problem. What's the cost of 15 tickets? So what's three times 15? $45. What's the cost for 30 tickets then? 15 or 45, how much are? 90, you just double it. All right, your homework, pages three, four, five, and six, but um, yeah, okay.